Hey, it's Carrie here from Treatment Unicorn and welcome to day three of Unicorn U. Now today we're going to be looking at how you can use your body as a barometer. <laughs> I'll explain more in a little bit. So tell me, when you were a kid, was there ever something you didn't really enjoy doing? You know, it might have been visiting a great aunt or doing swimming lessons or, uh, you know, it, it tends to be something that happened on a regular basis, but you find that you'd conveniently get like a um, stomach ache. You'd feel poorly, you'd feel rubbish, that you'd just complain that you didn't want to do it. It's really interesting how our, um, how our stress response and how our ability to like kind of kick in when it's something we don't really want to do, uh, how it like kind of pings up. And sometimes when we're under uh, prolonged exposure to stress, we find that it suppresses our immune system as well. You know, it's like, obviously as a kid, when you're trying to get out of your swimming lessons, actually you're just trying it on, but you're creating a response within your body to do that. However, when we're undergoing stress responses time after time after time, we get this prolonged kind of buildup of stress and that can lead to things like fatigue and anxiety and tiredness. And also it just leads to that kind of general malaise. And when we do get the opportunity to relax, we suddenly just go, oh, you know, like teachers at a, uh, teachers on a half term where they've been working hard all term and then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, too much, no more. So what I would like you to think about is how we use that body's response to stress and how it changes um, the way that our, our resources in the body are used. So when we're under prolonged stress, we tend to focus our energy on getting ready to fight or flight. And it's not about digestion and it's not about immunity. There's also a subconscious response. I think that nowadays that there's a lot more social competition, there's a lot of social comparison. We have a lot of outlets, um, maybe inlets of uh, telling us how we should be doing things and what life's supposed to look like and what we should be achieving. So there's a lot of competition. And sometimes we just get to that point where we're so stressed and our body is telling ourselves and our ego is telling us that really we're just not good enough. We're letting the team down that we ought to be like, pulling you know working harder and pulling the team more and that we're just like oh my god oh my god just it's never going to end it's just like deadline after deadline and also i think there's within our modern habits that and our daily habits we spend more time sitting we spend a lot more time being quite sedentary we look at screens we sit more we drive more we don't have such an active lifestyle we're not physically working harder and we're not really walking much we don't actually spend so much time in community we can be quite solitary even when you're with somebody if you're on your phone you're quite solitary so have a think about how many hours a day you spend being active and how many hours a day you spend feeling um, sedentary and then think about those days when you're more active what do you how do you feel do you feel more pingy do you feel as though you've got less energy when you're um, sat after a day at work and you feel as though you've been sat all day how does that feel within your body like when was the last time you took an impromptu dance break at work and it's like oh what your boss would probably think you've gone mental maybe you would also think that you've gone completely fruit loop the idea of us getting up and having a dance around the office is just like really <laughs> so let's think about this when was the last time at work you took yourself off for a little walk around the block or just outside for a breath of fresh air, or just stood up in the office and had a really good stretch about. I'm not sure we do it as often as we could do. And I think that this earnestness of, of work, it's, got, it's become a real kind of culturally approved thing. It's like we take our work more seriously than our own self-care or sanity. And here's the other thing. If you are self-employed, whether you are working on your own or within a team. If you're self-employed, you are your business's biggest asset. And if you're a solopreneur, solopreneur, if you are like all of your business, then you really are all of your business. If you get so stressed that you get, go sick and you can't work, that's 
that's basically your business gone. So I think that as business owners, we really have to pledge to ourselves that we'll take our own health and well-being more seriously and we need to prioritise ourselves above and beyond how we've done it before. We really, really need to take into consideration our own body's needs. And part of my curiosity is in how we can do that, how we can build our businesses based on love, where we need less competition, and also how we can put our own needs to the forefront. And that's not in a selfish way, that's just identifying the fact that the business is the business because we are the business and that we need to look after ourselves better so that we can continue to support ourselves and our families and our wider communities. So today's a joyous nugget of wisdom is also an action step and it's quite a fun one but it is serious so you know I'd love you to play along when we do this now. Okay <laughs> right how you think and feel about the things in your world, elements of your life, whether it's work or social, affects how you feel in your body. And I'm going to demonstrate it to you now with a little thing called the body's barometer. Okay, it's a rotation test. It's a simple thing, but what I want you to do is stand up and pop your feet hip width apart, and then you're going to place one arm out in front of you. So whichever arm you've placed out in front of you is the direction you are going to rotate. So if you put this arm out, you're going this way. If you put this arm out, you're going this way, okay? So your arms out in front of you, your feet are hip width apart. And I want you to keep your hips flat to the front, so don't twist all of your body. It's so hard to fit all of me in on this camera. And don't twist all of your body. <laughs> you're going to twist from your waist. And when you twist, I don't want you to see any of this kind of, not that I can see you, I don't want to see any of this arm swing, okay? So only go as far as your waist will let you travel. So the difference in the movement is from, let's say, this is me moving and just moving my waist. This is me moving and doing the same thing but letting my arms swing, okay? I can go around so much further, but I can't because it's not my body, it's just my shoulder joints flexing. Right, arm in front of you. Feet hip width apart and you're gonna rotate round. See how far you can go, see how it feels. Come back to the middle, raise your other arm and go in the opposite direction, ready? And then come back to the middle. Now, how did it feel from side to side? Was there any difference? Did it feel as easy? Did it feel as smooth? Did both sides just go, oh no, 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 no. Cool. This time, what I would like you to do is bring into mind your darkest, saddest memory. All right. I want you to let your mind wander back to a time which felt really heavy inside of you. OK, and just kind of let yourself settle into that energy. Got it? Alrighty. So. I'm out in front of you again, hips fixed to the front and you're just going to rotate from your waist okay and just see holding that thought in your head you might be able to feel the heaviness in your body and see how far around you can rotate and then come back to the middle and go in the opposite direction and then come back to the middle and this time in fact just shake off all the negative shake it off shake it off shake it off this time what I would like you to do is conjure up the most bright, sparkly, magical memory. The best day of your life. The day when you just thought anything is possible. Where you were so unbelievably happy that it was just like, whew, really heady. Got it? All right, arm out. Keeping your hips flat to the front. You're going to rotate at the waist. Hold that happy, happy happiness in your head. And I want you to rotate and see how far you can go. I'm back there. <laughs> I can feel my, I can feel my whole body just wanting to go. Woo! We're going the opposite direction. And then come back to the middle. Okay, how did it feel? Was there any difference between your now, your negative, and your positive state? 
most people find that there is quite a significant difference. Um, I was amazed by it the first time I, I did this and I'm, I'm still constantly in awe of the fact that how we think and how we feel really makes such a difference in our body. So when you're thinking about how you want to show up in the world, how you want to be in your business, you have to think about how you feel, which was why we were talking about ways to get yourself in a high vibration. Also, have a play with this and see how you feel when you, this is the cat trying to break into the room. <laughs> see how you feel when you apply it to other areas of your life. Cool. Tomorrow we will be back. We're going to be talking about you doing you. Take care, my loves, and I will see you for day four of Unicorn You.